Peace and greetings, everyone. Devonzo here. <clears throat> I wanted to give a uh, quick little update on some of the new uh, little guys we have going on. <clears throat> um, so I've basically been making um, what I like to think of as just um, a cheap uh, alternative to the Flipper Zero. And um, it seems like a lot of people, of course, um, have tried uh, similar uh, endeavors and um, definitely failed. Um, but I think this is a little different because I'm not really, uh, in a way, trying to compete uh, with such. Obviously, they're a huge company. Um, but I, I don't really want it to be that complex of an idea, you know. Um, there's a huge list of features that the Flipper Zero offers and I'm just doing my best to match those features and also include things um, that the Flipper does not have. Um, because these are both, um, you know, cybersecurity and, um, you know, pen testing focused. Uh, most of the things in here <clears throat> um, really involve, you know, around more like hacking type uh, things. Whereas like Flipper Zero, um, has a lot of interesting uh, features, kind of like uh, some of the more like pranks and stuff. Um, but I wouldn't say um, without the extra add-ons. Now, of course, obviously there's a lot of add-ons. Um, that's where that then gets um, really interesting. Um, but, you know, I've had a lot of ideas uh, while designing and that's kind of why I want to create uh, various different prototypes and have different um, versions. Um, but one thing I wanted to um, one thing I wanted to definitely do, um, kind of like the Flipper Zero, is have like an expansion area um, that you can plug in extra uh, modules. I don't really know exactly where it could go, um, but just somewhere on there because there's um, definitely a few extra pins on the ESP32. Uh, um, this is definitely, obviously, the uh, first uh, version. Uh, I don't know if you can see that 1.0. Um, but let's go and take a closer look and kind of just see some of the things that I want to do in the future and kind of where we're at right now. Because um, there's definitely quite a few different routes. All right, so um, there's gonna be a few different uh, different variations. Um, I want the all-in-one uh, version, so it'd be kind of the biggest. And um, because this was the first version, there's still a few things um, that are missing out that the uh, Mini tried to uh, pick up on. Um, but the final um, version um, will definitely have an option to have the CC1101 radio or um, the NRF. Um, this is just a prototype, but the um, NRF 24LO1 PA LNA module. Um, because they both have the same uh, pinouts. So um, you can either have either one. Um, so let's say you have one of my PCB designs or any project, really. You're going to want to go to PCBWay.com. And this is a really amazing site because they really cover just about anything you can possibly desire as far as your project goes. Um, they even have competitions uh, for design projects. Um, as you see right now, they're having a $6,000 project. But if you want to um, get designing, they have uh, various different things, <clears throat> whether it's CNC machining, uh, 3D printing, which I'm going to be using quite a lot um, for a lot of my uh, devices that I'm making, heat metal fabrication, injection molding. Um, so if you don't have like a workshop or a local um, center where you can use a lot of these tools and um, <clears throat> especially if you're trying to make yeah, a lot of products um, like let's say I need 10 to 300 to 1000 um, 3D cases 
of one of my devices, <clears throat> there's no way I can do that with my personal 3D printer. Um, they also have a PCB assembly, which is um, having the PCB board, PCB board uh, printed, uh, but also getting the surface parts or really whatever parts you needed uh, soldered. Even if you only needed like half the project um, assembled, uh, it's a great way to save a lot of time. And right now <clears throat> you can get one to 20 pieces uh, for $30 and uh, 10 pieces for $5. So let's say you want to um, just make a quick uh, prototype and get a quote um, here. You'll just insert in um, just some dimensions of your PCB design. And you now go to the main area where you can choose all the different specifications. You can choose advanced PCB, flexible PCB, assembly, um, but you want to just do standard PCB uh, for more, most cases. <clears throat> so you're going to select um, your quantity and you can select um, even different designs as well. If you want to have, um, you know, a few different um, options for the same PCB board. And we have the uh, materials. The FR4 is the uh, default. And also if you hover over the question marks, <clears throat> they have really nice uh, detailed um, descriptions of every single option. So even if you're a complete beginner, um, you can get a really good idea <clears throat> of what each of these options are. Because I want to make sure you um, get exactly what you want. And uh, here you can choose uh, the colors of the solder mask. Like as you see with uh, this board, um, I chose purple, um, but some colors are a little bit more than others. Uh, green is default. And then the silk screen is the letters and the um, lines on the board. So you're just going to want to go through and select all the um, other options um, down to the copper weight. And then here, um, is uh, interesting because you can have special requests like let's say your pcb design is missing a few things or you wanted some extra labels um, or you wanted to put um, just any extra um, requests you can put down here and then they'll send you um, a picture of the pcb design so you can confirm and make sure that's exactly what you want and then here we have a smd stencil and assembly service uh, once again, and they have a few different options. Um, PCB can supply the parts. Um, you can supply the, uh, the parts. So um, I ship them to them or do a little bit, little, little bit of both. Um, because in some cases, um, some parts are really hard to source. So you might find <clears throat> somewhere to source them and uh, go that route. So once you've uh, gotten everything, you'll click Calculate. So let me put in the size. So you'll click calculate and you'll get a uh, price and you can uh, get it built in 24 hours or uh, extremely fast, um, probably within a few hours and um, select your shipping. Then you're just gonna go save to cart. And this is where you'll then add your Gerber files, whichever format it's in. And uh, this is your main portal, so <clears throat> you'll see the status on your PCB, and they're usually really quick. And if you have any questions, um, you can always ask um, the little chat bot here. And then you can always view the details <clears throat> of your project um, just to make sure everything is correct. And um, yeah, so as you can see here um, with some other boards I have going on, um, they're being reviewed and this is where you also just go to check um, previous projects and that's pretty much it you know it's really easy um, fun and simple to just really get your projects going and um, really save a lot of money too when it comes to prototyping 
Uh, so yeah, make sure to check out PCB Way. Uh, we have a much better um, F NFC RFID module planned ahead. Um, so there's like three levels. This is level one, and it scans just um, the MyFair 1Ks. And then this is the PN532. And uh, this scans um, quite a bit more, um, but it's still uh, very limited. And then we have uh, the ultimate PN7160. And this one um, scans pretty much <clears throat> all the NFC RFID tags. Um, but what's even more awesome, um, which I'm waiting, um, I'm waiting to do any um, more versions on this one because I have a custom module that I'm getting made and it's going to do some <clears throat> um, improvements like we're getting this whole um, 8 pin connector out of the way uh, because that's just that much more wires people need to buy and then um, <clears throat> we're going to make it uh, much smaller because most of the size of this is the um, PCB antenna um, so I'm going to have a um, external antenna connector, a UFL, um, so you can purchase your own antenna. Um, and I'm going to do some research on a lot of the different antennas you can get, so I'll probably tr um, supply an antenna as well if you want that whole kit. Uh, but then I'll be able to um, completely replace um, these ones and have uh, super nice um, custom module. Um, yeah, so I'm probably going to wait until I do any more <clears throat> um, revisions because then if the new custom one works, I'm just going to put it on all of them. So then um, one thing 100% that Flipper Zero does not have is, at least for right now, um, I do know or heard they're working on a new uh, flipper uh, device, um, but they do not have this chip, and um, that's just one thing that will make uh, this device definitely um, better in that aspect. Um, <clears throat> I want to try and find a better RGB light solution. Um, which shouldn't be that hard, um, but these are kind of hard to find, so um, <clears throat> it'd be smarter to just replace those. Um, once again, the GPS is really nice, um, but there's a way that I could get just the surface mount version, um, so I could really um, make a lot less uh, space, um, and the screen's good. Um, so for the small version, um, I really wanted to try and make it as small as possible, um, especially having the module on the back. Um, however, I do think I can get it maybe a little bit smaller. Um, and the pins on the ESP32 C3 Mini have been kind of maxed out, um, so... There's not really much room, <clears throat> but I think I'm going to have a few different um, variations of this one, uh, too. Um, like maybe have an NRF uh, version. And um, one thing that might be possible is to maybe have a version without the GPS or uh, SD card, because then I can... Um, switch it up and maybe have um, the CC1101 and the um, NRF uh, as well, or um, have this and like uh, the infrared um, LEDs, or just kind of mix it up because if I did get rid of the GPS um, or even just kept the GPS or something and got rid of the SD card because it does use um, quite a lot of pins, um, then I could add uh, quite a lot more. Um, but overall, I I'm kind of happy with the current um, 
state of things. I really just want to wait for the new custom module because then um, there's a few different things um, I might want to do with this. And I kind of was also thinking um, just to kind of expand on how many modules or how many things I can have on here. Um, it might sound kind of crazy, but I think I want to add um, like a Raspberry, not a Raspberry Pico, but um, the Raspberry um, RP2040 Zero. So it's basically as big as um, this uh, Super Mini here. Um, so like imagine if I had this Super Mini um, sized microcontroller like right here. And then um, obviously this might get a little bit bigger or have some stuff on the back, but then I would have just more inputs and um, I could connect them through UART, <coughs> through the um, RXTX. And I don't know, who knows, maybe add in um, like some mechanical keys or freaking who knows what, <coughs> what else, but that just kind of give uh, more wiggle room and kind of sky's the limit. Um, but definitely I want to have just some way to have um, extra modules to be added on and um, kind of go from there. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Um, you know, I, I, I'm working on uh, most of the code uh, right now, um, kind of like a little bit over 1500-ish lines of code. And uh, both of these in a lot of ways have completely different uh, code bases um, be because of uh, how the features are. So there's different things that uh, this has. And um, as I add in, um, you know, new modules, especially like when I add in uh, this new PN7160 module, which I'm working on the code for this um, to start prototyping. Um, <clears throat> gets a little bit more complex. Uh, technically, all of the code is done. I have it in different um, sections, like different, um, different scripts. And all of these will be like individually uploaded uh, to GitHub uh, when they're all kind of finalized. And then um, the entire code base um, for the um, Cypherbox and Cypherbox Mini and Cypherbox Pro, whatever else, um, will all be out on GitHub. And um, also uh, the files, if I get to that point. Um, but yeah, probably should be done um, at some point. And just be on the lookout. You can find um, the different components that I use to uh, make these in the uh, description and just stay tuned uh, for uh, much more. I have quite a few other projects um, that I'm about to um, make some videos on. Um, that, yeah, peace.